What do you think of the British people? My experience is kind of limited, but I've been to the UK several times and have plenty of British colleagues. For some reason I seem to get along better with the working class Brits that I've met. They seem to be decent straightforward people. If they're wonkers, you can kind of tell right away. The further you move up in class, the stranger the behavior seems to get, and the more difficult the people are to read. That surface politeness can hide anything from a very decent if somewhat stiff person to a complete fucking psychopath. As a Sardinian, I went to Mallorca and flatly told my Spanish friends that if tourists behaved that way where I'm from, they'd probably get shot in the streets by the locals. To be honest, better poor than being subject to the humiliation if having to cater to such people every year, providing them with weird theme park areas where they can eat their food rather than yours, get blackout drunk vomiting half naked on the side of your streets and starting fights everywhere, so much so that locals literally flee the area. What's the point of having money if you can't even enjoy your island anymore? Got off the train into London from Edinburgh around the time everyone was getting off of work. It was midweek and I just sauntered around watching the swarm of people in work clothes going immediately to the pubs or takeaway shops to grab some drinks. Decided to join in and grab the sandwich and two beers, then proceeded to a park where I watched two women in work clothes down a bottle of wine the last sips of which were poured sloppily and jovially as they laughed when one spilled a little on her purse before they got up and went on their way. It was quite a lovely and specific afternoon. The evenings though. Everyone wanders the streets already drunk it seems, no pub in particular is too crowded and the entire place is just a somewhat rowdy, at least in the eyes of this American woman, happy mess of a time. It was really interesting to see. I'm in the US and work with our British, and Ireland, office daily. We tease each other over our stereotypes a lot and it's all in good fun. I believe it was 2010 when England played the US during the World Cup series. I bought a bunch of US jerseys and shipped them to their office without telling them for some inter-office trash talking. In return, they shipped me a huge box that contained an England jersey, a beach towel with their emblem on it, a bunch of biscuits and tea, salt and pepper shakers in the shape of phone boxes, and a toy double-decker bus without telling me. All and all, I love those guys and gals over there. A fun bunch of peeps. Edit to add, yeah, I'm used to saying World Series, baseball. My bad. Eh, yeah, I think a lot of what people expect us to be, me included, is heavily influenced by the media. We're stubborn and proud. There's a strange almost invisible air of superiority that many seem to carry, and most of them think they're better than everybody else in the world merely by being born on this small island. As if this patch of dirt is better than any other patch of dirt in the world. Despite having almost all of our written history drowned in Christianity, our gods of war never really left us when you look at our past. We're tough and loving and vengeful and poetic. We're ignorant and entrepreneurial. Very multicultural yet very much ourselves. It's kind of a mixed bag really, but I'm pretty sure you could say that about anywhere. I'm happy to live here, but can't say I've ever been patriotic or proud to be British. This American loves our British cousins. The understated humor, the great music and bands, the stiff upper lip, the common sense, the work ethic, and a proclivity for telling Nazis to fuck off. What I really love is British pub culture. It's so warming. People having tall pints and playing chess or checkers, engaging in great conversation, and the pies. Man. You all do very exciting things with pies. I was in a pub near Whitby a few years back. Cold rain outside but there was a warm fire crackling, Boddington's on tap, and the lighting was this earthy dark glow. Felt so cozy and wonderful. Anyway. You folks are okay. As a Northern Irish person living in England, I feel that the Red Band Press, The Sun, Mirror, Daily Star etc., have been allowed to run rampant, 
creating a culture of idiots while cultivating this prejudice which we are seeing now. For the most part people are okay. The idiots that have learned to play the system and live off the state, while displaying an IQ lower than that of a snail are the ones that label the British as cunts. Racist, Islamophobic, loudmouthed and uneducated cunts. Edit, I should have mentioned the xenophobia which is running rampant. I know plenty of lovely English slash British people who don't meet this criteria, unfortunately I have run-ins with the people that do on a daily basis. Friendly and polite. A good sense of humor. A net positive look on life. Pints. Good quality fish and chips, like places where it's fresh AF like the Isle of Wight, goddamn. Football. Lots of plans made and see ya laters when bumping into old friends, but they never happen. Very good English in some of the raps. It's like they use the language in a very different way than the US, which is also a bit obvious. The battle raps are also hilarious. Oi look there's a chav slash that means council housed and violent slash. The hyacinth stereotype. Honestly I love the Brits post-imperialism and I'm scared about your future post-Brexit. Much love from Finland. Lived in UK, East Midlands for about three years as Eastern European. Moved due to wanting to see a bit more of the world and eventually spent my time there in uni and working. During these three years I've had heard loads of negative comments about myself being migrant and etc. Even got into a few fights due to my accent. So Brits are a bunch of Nazi cunts who can't accept anything other than themselves and Brexit is as logical as possible? That's the question I get from time to time. And no, I love and miss my time in UK every once in a while, 33 now, was 20 at the time. Most people are extremely polite but not in a fake way, like genuinely polite. If you befriend someone, they'll help and defend you to the death. I know that's what friends are supposed to do, but Englishmen take that to another level. Folk really enjoys their Friday nights, live in the life, you can say. Shouting, singing, constant fighting. You Brits are a lively bunch. I have never understood though why every single man slash woman needs to get enormously pissed by 10 p.m. Like really, can someone explain this? Party is over by 11 cause Dave just dropped unconscious in front of police. And most important Lart is swearing. That island swears with such saucy compound words, it's brilliant. Brits and Australians got the best swearing abilities of all nationalities I've met in my life. As a British person who no longer lives in Britain. We can be the whiniest, pettiest, most entitled bunch of miserable bastards on the planet, despite the fact that most Brits have it relatively good. We can be some of the most xenophobic, racist, selfish, bigoted individualists, and infuriatingly short-sighted politically. We cling to classism and judge people's worth by where they came from, where they went to school, how much they own and it's toxic. We can also be some of the most egalitarian, progressive, even radical people who fight for justice and care deeply about our communities and the world. We create wonderful art, culture, entertainment, and music. Many of us cherish science and education and our universities are generating outstanding research. We have an amazing sense of humor and we love to laugh at it, we have the best cursing in the world, and no one can tell me different. The Scottish, Welsh, Irish and Cornish communities are impressively unique and fight like hell to keep their identities intact. TLDR, both the best and worst people I have ever known in my life are British. We are wonderful and we are absolutely awful. Resentment towards the American government, which is seen to not stay in their lane enough. The USA has a reputation for playing world police, making one-sided agreements, e.g. expecting the UK to extradite people to the USA but refusing to give up their own criminals that are wanted over here, and generally just escalating issues that need to be de-escalated. Obviously, taking this out on individual Americans is as ridiculous as attacking individual British people for things like the British Empire. American exceptionalism, 
which rubs foreigners up the wrong way when it's directed at us. I think a lot of us non-Americans have experienced patronizing attitudes, a lack of understanding that laws, legal rights etc. are not the same in the US as in other countries, people expecting us to accept USD when overseas, people expecting us to put in all the legwork translating our words or units of measurement rather than simply googling, this doesn't seem to happen much in reverse, or presenting sweeping statements as absolute truth, Europe is secular, the NHS is terrible, the UK is full of no-go zones. Sometimes the nerves get rubbed raw if this happens a lot, and people start overreacting to Americans who just asked an innocent question. I don't think it's right to be rude to people, but I can sort of understand the perspective I have a few American friends who do this completely unintentionally and it does tend to wear on the patients a little bit. But Americans in general? I like you guys. I don't understand every aspect of your culture and sometimes I think national perspectives put us in different worlds, but that's what makes things fun. And once COVID is less of a thing I would absolutely like to go visit your country. No idea where at the moment, but I would like to visit. The only issue I have with Brits are how rude they are to us Americans. There are a few caveats to this, firstly I've noticed that Americans tend to take deadpan and sarcastic literally, which forms a large part of British humor. Secondly when not being humorous, I've gotta admit, between media and Americans that I've spoken to online, they do a spectacularly good job of portraying America in a bad light, it got mentioned elsewhere in a few other comments but the brish teeth bad and the rough run, Murica, fuck the redcoats peeps are frankly obnoxious and ignorant, further fueling the dumb American stereotype. However, I can't speak for other Brits but I have visited the US twice and am fully aware that like every other country, you have your good and bad. But I do take offense at the concept we're culturally the same XD. You guys can drink. Now you just need to learn how. As an Eastern European who used to drink shots of Palenka, 60% alcohol drink brewed at home from rotten fruits, when I was 14, before every big family dinner, I can say I'm not impressed, but you got potential, and I almost tear up when I see people coming at the pub drinking three beers and two cocktails in 40 minutes then throwing up in front of the pub, no no also if you are a man and have balls why order a pina colada, man ferry. Before coming in the UK I thought I knew English because I could understand American songs from YouTube and watch movies with no subtitles, after six years I still have problems understanding what British people say to me when I work in loud venues, I just laugh and hope it wasn't a question. That accent kills me. It's way more violent than I thought. You know, coming from a shitty place in Eastern Europe, you don't expect good-looking respectable gentlemen to have fights in a pub and leave each others in pools of blood, eh just another day on the doors man shrugging. Also, you could meet the nicest lady at a coffee shop, or a very polite middle-aged guy, or a cool person being the nicest guy ever, very educated people and polite individuals, then you go to streets down the road and find 16-year-olds in tracksuits and absolute dickheads on a super dirty street, it's a very weird contrast. My advice, if you want to see the beauty of British people, leave big cities behind, find a very cool little village and go around, I used TI work as a furniture delivery guy and I saw some little places and villages with the best looking houses, parks and nicest people that I ever met in my entire life Two hearts. Wonkers, the whole lot of them. No, actually some of the most wonderful folks on the planet. I've met the most genuine, hard-working, hilarious, and kind English folks in my life. I've had the chance to make some amazing friends from there since I own Bull Terriers. Granted our girl is named Everton, man you would have sounded weird winking face, and is actually named for a character in the old show Chef. Long story short, grew up with two parents who always had BBC programming on of some sort even though they weren't English, not a drop. So I learned to appreciate England, its comedy, its people, and its flake bars at an early age. Now if you'll excuse me I have to go pet my pussy with Mrs. Slocum and the rest of Grace Brothers watching. 
have to say I'm kinda grossed out by what I see lately on the media and the here on Reddit. Soccer hooligan behavior that senselessly ends up looting and trashing communities and innocent bystanders. A general incapability of having discourse, it's basically their ideas or you're shut down slash ghosted or similar. A lack of accountability or work ethic and a huge entitlement complex. Authority or success are looked at in disdain. Of course I don't think all British are like this, and I also don't think the British have the monopoly on this behavior. It could be the class distancing, from the US, I don't see this anywhere near as much. The guy next to you in shorts and t-shirt can be crazy wealthy and the guy with the ridiculously nice cloths and exotic car could be on the verge to poverty. When I lived in England as an au pair I found out that English fake politeness is a thing grinning face with sweat the host family was horrible and the kids were devil spawn. The dad would even yell at me in front of them for not taking in the bin despite it being his only task. Anyways they kicked me out with 36 hours notice and didn't want to pay me the £450 they owed me for 3 weeks work and babysitting. So. I took advantage of the whole English fake politeness as I was texting them for three weeks afterwards to get the money they owed me, so I'd be like hi James, so sorry to bother you, I was just trying to buy a ticket and I doesn't seem to want to accept my card, so I checked with my bank, and your last payment doesn't seem to have arrived just yet. Do you know how many days it should be for the transfer to go through? I hadn't tried to buy a ticket and I had a good savings, but they didn't need to know that smirking face when he stopped responding I texted my host mum instead like oh terribly sorry to bother you, but do you know if James have seen my messages as I haven't gotten a response concerning the money for January he promised to transfer. I hope you're all having a lovely time and that everything is going well with your new project. Tell the kids I said hi and have a nice evening in other words transfer my effing money grinning face with sweat anyways, three weeks later. On the first day at my new host family, after taking fully advantage of 18 years of experience from being an annoying middle child and texting them every other day, I suddenly received £380 from them smirking face a great thing about the English fake politeness is that if others were to read the messages you'd never appear to be the a-hole as you're always being very kind smirking face the new. Host mum was amazing and thought it was hilarious that I'd actually been able to be annoying enough to get my money and she completely agreed that anyone reading their responses would be on my side, so they'd probably not share it with anyone rolling on the floor laughing last host family was amazing and we still keep in touch smiling face with hearts. I was born and raised in the UK, and here are my observations. British people in general have good values. We have a sense of fairness. We queue, we are gentle with animals, we stand to allow the elderly or pregnant to sit, we tend to live quietly and keep our communities clean and orderly. The country is, in general, quite safe and relatively free from institutionalist bribery and corruption. We are a little highly strung, and although there is a layer of formulaic civility, when you scratch the surface there is often a pent up underside, we live our lives as if we are reserved, detached and unemotional, and yet whenever emotions are allowed to be expressed we can go nuts, there are routine fights in pubs, a heavy police presence at sports events, and a road rage mentality that erupts far too easily. For this reason we make a bad name for the country overseas where we go on holidays and party hard, try drugs, walk around with our shirts off singing and cheering, and drink until we puke in the streets as a means of venting for how we have to comport ourselves in regimented fashion all the rest of the time. The same young woman who went to Ibiza for a bubble party, got wasted, snogged strangers, pulled her top up, and danced on tables will all the rest of the time just be a doer, quiet commuter with a detached, slightly pissed off expression on her face the other 51 weeks of the year, when she's back home because God forbid she express herself in the UK. Our tendency to keep our emotions and conduct in check means that we don't find it easy to make new friends. Sure, we might have people around us that we know and like, but the need to feel, and to appear, self-reliant means that most of our friendships involve occasionally meeting, and very occasionally texting, but never calling, others mainly to engage in very formulaic, very standard, 
save chit chat about a narrow variety of themes, cars, sports, weather, work, and recent news being go to favorites. This trend towards self restraint and detachment means that we tend not to be physically demonstrative to our partners in public, and imbues courtship with more nervousness than is really necessary. There is an undercurrent of angst that accompanies sex in this country, as a culture we have not yet made peace with our sexual selves. There are barriers of all sorts between males and females in this country that we experience from an early age, and into adulthood your average UK male will be at a romantic disadvantage compared to someone who understands what women want, what they want to hear, and how they think. We are concerned about status and pecking orders. We are also reserved and standoffish to a fault, for example, at uni we will tend to mostly hang out with others doing the same course as us and slash or who live on the same floor in halls, despite there being thousands of others on campus. Go onto the tube during rush hour and you will see thousands of people, all with so much in common, often age appropriate, and sitting within inches of each other for up to half an hour at a time, and yet, no one will talk to anyone, even if they could be sitting next to a new best mate, or a future partner. I am sure there have been untold millions of very positive relationships in this country nipped in the bud by our unwillingness to engage with others, and our tendency to view effusiveness and geniality with suspicion. We are strong, but a little highly strung, we can put up with a lot of hardship, but we'll either complain all the way, or put up a mask of imperturbability to hide our true emotions, even if it is unhealthy. We are uptight, we remember minor, even unintentional transgressions, are quick to invent a reputation or a nickname for someone, if someone at work, or in the bar etc. wants to treat us to something we assume they have a sinister agenda, we cannot fathom that sometimes people will be nice just for the sake of it, that people can be big-hearted, with no expectation of repayment. We don't like confrontation, we are in the habit of leaving discreet notes for people who displease us, or for dropping hints, or for making a complaint in ways that bypass the guilty party and pass on responsibility for the confrontation to someone else. We have a negative view of most other countries, and often speak of them and their citizens in stereotypical terms, usually ignoring their positives. We are particularly prone to denigrating, and, by proxy, underestimating, the French, the Germans, and, Ironically because of our long history of mutual successful collaboration and shared culture, the US. However we have generally good impressions of the Dutch, Swedes, and Norwegians.